What's cracking, YouTube family? It's your big homie Wayne, and today I'm about to hit y'all off with another one of these reaction videos. All right, so this one right here is gonna be coming up from uh, True Crime Daily. Name of this one is just the Sky Mams case. Let's get into it. It's one of the most vicious attacks ever caught on surveillance. A convenience store clerk repeatedly stabbed late one night in Georgia. At 1017, the clerk, DK Chadhari, is completely overpowered by the six foot two attacker and shoved into a back storage area. Right here, you see the clerk kick a gun out of the assailant's hand, but the attacker quickly pulls a knife. Another security camera inside the store shows customers are totally unaware of the brutality going on in the back room. Dang. To keep the clerk quiet, the heartless killer duct tapes the poor man's mouth, then covers his nose to silence his last breath. Dang. DK Chowdhari never had a chance. Ran up on that door like that. The medical examiner later testified that he would have been dead within a few minutes. But even if the wound was delivered in a hospital, oh, it would have been very hard to save his life because of the amount of blood that he lost and how quickly he lost that blood. Once DK is dead, the assailant scrambles between the back room and the front counter, and at one point, actually tells customers to get out. Oh. Oh. Ends up having some contact with them, talks to them, tells them the store's closed, there's been an emergency, and that they need to leave and ultimately convinces them to leave. They don't realize what's happened. Customers in the store are confused, but they do ultimately leave and drive off. The killer then gets to work, raiding the register, trying to open the safe. And then right here, you can see the perpetrator steal a roll of $500 a week for life, scratch off lottery tickets. Wow. Then returns to the back room one last time, stuffs the loot into a bag wow. right next to DK's dead body and takes off. Lotto tickets. Moments later, another customer comes in. He looks around, he notices there's money on the floor behind the register. Ultimately goes back and looks in the kitchen and sees the victim's body. Wow. Wow. Leaves the store without touching anything, calls 911. Howdy, 911. What's the address of your emergency? Airport Road, 3385. Airport Road? Yeah. Wow. We just walked in the store and seen this guy down for chain gun floor, looked like they've been robbed. Did you tell if he was injured at all? I've seen blood on the floor and he's down. I didn't walk back there and look. Okay. Ladies can go look. Wow, the Plus lady's going to go look. Operator, one of those customers, Melanie Brewer, goes back in and checks so the victim to make sure uh, if he's What if the guy was still back there? Care. And wow. she can tell clearly without even touching the body that he's deceased and he's not breathing. Now, I think that part right there was crazy. The guy got on the phone. Call 911 was the right thing to do. Then you send the lady back there to go look and see what's going on. Like, come on, what if what if the what if the the killer was still up in there? You don't send the lady to go look. But she, I guess she was just nosy because she was the one who said she go look. So. Everywhere. He's hurt. No, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Oh man. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's a good one. Dang. Cops look at surveillance video, but it's no help. Then, there was the brutality of the attack. It's so odd to hear of violent crimes in a convenience store. Because of the way the training is now, you're instructed just to, you know, hand over whatever they want and get them out of the store as quick as you can. Hey, where did the knife come and from? And in this case, you would think, even as dangerous as convenience store clerks and some of the stories that you read and see, I don't think Dang. he ever expected that, and especially here. Because, like I said, it's, it's not a violent crime kind of area. Lawmen had theories, but the picture didn't seem to add up. Part of the initial discussion was trying to determine is this really a robbery and a complete stranger or is this someone the victim knows and maybe the robbery is an afterthought or the robbery is to make it look like it was a stranger to throw us off a little bit. Then the big break. Cops find a key clue right next to DK's dead body, a cell phone. It was laying about even with his waist and slightly pushed up under one of the fryers in the kitchen. And wow. so the initial thought was that that was the victim's phone. But it turns out the phone doesn't belong to DK. Did the killer accidentally drop it during the attack? Could this be the break investigators need to bring the brutal killer to justice? As the brutality plays out in the back room, customers coming in and out of the store have no idea of the ugly, violent scene just feet away. 
During the struggle, the attacker drops a key piece of evidence, a cell phone. Mm. Investigators access the stored photos and are stunned by what they find. The menacing 6'2 savage killer who viciously beat the poor store clerk down is a woman. Whoa. What they found was Whoa. photographs of Sky Nims, her family, and nothing that appeared Whoa. to be the victim or his family. So they quickly determined that the suspect had actually dropped herself wow. from, uh, at the scene. And that was our first big break in the investigation. Wow. They began a complete forensic examination of that phone at that point. Sky Mims, a striking 22-year-old model, dancer, and rapper. If you don't want love, that's like my soul. She recently wow. moved to Atlanta with the dreams of hitting it big in the music biz. It didn't take cops in Georgia long to discover her. They got a phone tip about where she was staying. U.S. Marshals Task Force began setting up yeah. surveillance on that house until nice they were house. determined, in fact, that she was home and go in and make the arrest. They're greeted by a very agitated and very naked Sky Mims. When they go in and she's wow. naked at the top of the staircase and they're screaming, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me. And I can't imagine what the law enforcement officers were thinking when they finally got her arrested. She's brought out to a patrol car, handcuffed, wrapped in a blanket. But somehow Sky Mams slips out of the cuffs what? and the blanket. Hi, you okay? You okay? Are you okay? Jeremy. Go ahead. She's doing something to herself. She take off our cuffs. 925, you're gonna pull over. Wow, she took a pull over. She taunts the cops with her. Yo. What's good? Like, how'd she get the cuffs off? Yo, there's something going on with her, man. Her Houdini act. Drop the floor after that. Drop Don't move. The naked Mims is recuffed but this time also with leg shackles. Mims, who had been silent until now, suddenly mouths off. Huh. Did you show me what he done? I can't hear you. Tasing. I wasn't there, so I can't tell you. You got a gun on you? Oh. 944-961. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah. Do you think he did it? Disregard. 944-964. Would you shoot me in my head? Go ahead. Once in an interrogation room, her actions get more bizarre. At times, she even seems amused. Things don't get much better during questioning. Is there a reason you came down here? Nope. What kind of shows do you have? Music. Music shows, is that where you sing in or playing instruments or what? Wow. Right. And the other key question Sky Mims refused to answer was why. Turns out it was all about those lottery tickets. She thought winning the lottery was her ticket to financial security so she could pursue her artistic career. A state shrink determines Sky Mims isn't crazy, so she's charged with murder and put on trial. There is a pile of evidence against her. In addition to the terrifying stabbing, the surveillance video shows Mims coming in to case the store in a different outfit an hour before the attack. The gloves the killer wore have Mims' skin cells in them. Between her house and the car, cops found the knife with Chowdhury's blood on it and a roll of red duct tape like that used to smother the victim. And finally, police find dozens of those $500 a week for life lottery tickets already scratched off in search of the prize. Mems pleaded not guilty. During her trial, her odd behavior didn't change. A lot of people got upset when she would come into the courtroom and blow kisses at people and make signs to some of her family that was there. She would turn around and make gestures to members of the audience. She would make eye contact with the camera, make gestures to the camera, and that went on off and on during the week. 
she would laugh and even giggle at times during the trial, uh, during witness questioning, if a, an answer she didn't like. She even laughed and giggled some during her own attorney's closing argument to the jury. And you could tell that that was not helping her with the jury in any way. Turns out, that is a bit of an understatement. In a trial that went from opening statements to closing arguments in five days, deliberations took less than an hour. Where the jury find the defendant, count one, malice, murder, guilty. The defendant, who slipped her cuff, smiled through interrogation, mugged for the camera, and laughed during testimony, stood stone-faced and unmoving as she was pronounced guilty of all 11 counts and then taken away without so much as a look back or a second thought for her victim, D.K. Chowdhari. All right, so there we have it, True Crime Daily uh, with the Sky Mims case down in Georgia. Uh, man, that was a... Uh... Man, a tragic, tragic, tragic case, man. Um, store clerk, just trying to do his due diligence out here, just trying to make a living. And um, whoa, to have a person like that just run up into the door like that when you're not paying attention, you know what I'm saying, on a normal shift, you know, got customers in the store, have somebody just run up in there on you and just attack you like that. Man, that's amazing that that went down like that. And I'm 6'2 myself, so you can even see inside the interrogation room how she kind of towered over uh, the investigator who was asking her the questions while they were sitting down. So, man, that's, uh, that's a whole lot of woman. That's a whole lot of person in general coming at you when you're caught off guard. And probably was an older gentleman. Um, that clearly looked smaller and, you know, a little bit, uh, look, clearly looked smaller, a little weaker um, than Sky Mims in the video. So, wow, man, that's tragic and then to have a young young lady like that throw her whole life away you know over a few lotto tickets um it kind of shows you what her what her mind state was when she did that you know what i'm saying uh -huh. but what do you guys think i'm just in the comments and let us know how you feel about this one right here from true crime daily uh man are you guys as blown away as i am how do you think what do you think about that man do you think that was just totally senseless i mean like man can't can prison rehab people like that at all? Like, jump down in the comments and let me know. Uh, while you're ready, if you haven't done so already, give this video a huge thumbs up. There's lots for exposure for the channel. More people see the video just like you did, so let's give it a huge thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, you're still here, hit the subscribe button, become a member of the family. Make sure you ring the notification bell so you can always know when we're dropping stuff off over here. All right, thank you guys for the support. Thank you for stopping by. And as always, peace.